You look cool. Well, after all that, why don't we shift focus back on the main quest real quick then? I do want to try and see if we can fix that music bug. That would be back over here. Look for the white slayer. We have no fast travel markers, so maybe it's best for us to just... Oh. Right, we got the... Oh my god, all the diagrams now. There can only be one. Feet as cold as ice. A lot of things going on. There are some smaller towns that we haven't visited yet, too. I'm sure we'll get some chance to do so, but um... Let's focus on the white. Which we will get to by going to Frankel Arts and... Going all the way here and then go over here? Yeah? What's here? Gwent. Well, we'll see. Oh. Right... Over here. So we just cut right through this place then. I think we've already looked at this place last time, right? There's an armor here. Yeah, you're the Gwent guy, that's right. There's a small house off to the side here. Would that be this place? Something is wrong with the coloring here. Eat something. Oh. Nourish yourself. You knit color. You look horrid. Four fingers. Okay, these people have got to be important, right? We've seen a lot of arrest warrants for them, but I don't know anything about them otherwise. Nobody has talked about them just yet. It's just a locked house. Okay. Oh, but there's a bigger place here. We should probably check that out and then check out the question mark. If we wrap around here... Oh, look at all those wild horses! We should tame one of them and bring it back to the stables when it's done. Look at them. Some rarer colors too. There's some strangely colored walls. Somebody was using this place as experimentations for their new paint. Doran Alma Estate. Do you have a door, or can I just... <laughs> okay, maybe I'll look for a door. Hello? Whoa. Someone tried to scale the wall but fell. Probably tried to flee the estate but couldn't get the gate open. Not likely to have gotten far. Lost too much blood. Oh, that's a really high wall. Normal people can't really do that. Gate's locked from the inside, but got jostled pretty hard. Barely hanging on the hinges. Are there people here? This man is dying! Help me! What's going on? Oh, they want me to go there first. The dressings, bandages, where did I put them? Forget it. Bandages won't do him any good. What? Oh, but he breathed still a moment ago. Mm-hmm. Breathed his last then. Bled to death. Legs broken. Femoral arteries ruptured. Wound like that, you're dead in minutes. Gods. What happened here exactly? I... I was rolling through, fully loaded, when I heard screams. This one crawled towards the road, then drooped to the ground. Lost consciousness. I jumped down to help him. Tress his wounds. Then you appeared. Somebody who has a lot of armor. I would have expected somebody who tried to scale the wall to be like a thief. So that is not quite the kind of outfit I would be expecting someone like that to wear. I don't have a reason to suspect him, especially since he called out to me personally. Pretty admirable stopping to help a stranger. Truthfully, when I saw him, I considered it might be an ambush. The thought entered my mind, I near decided to crack the whip. But to abandon a man in need? It's simply not the decent thing to do. Decent enough in many other places, believe me. 
Before you go on, clean your hands thoroughly and burn your shirt. Might also want to rub some time on your body to be sure. The smell of blood might attract ghouls otherwise. Who... who might you be, precisely? A witcher. Oh. <clears throat> do, do, do you expect some beast might have killed him? See what we have here. Legs broken, but cause of death's the wound. Small but deep, edges unfrayed. Either a thrust weapon or a thick claw. Maybe a wyvern's. Tough to say, and... Mm, breastplate's unusual. Dented. And it's got a patina. An antiquity, I believe. I deal in these things, so... Uh, what's puzzling is... Why did he done it? Not likely to learn that from him. Might even know where he came from. Got work to do, so... So long. Wait, I will come with you. Okay. Uh, sure. Mm, so be it. But stay close, keep it down, and don't touch a thing. I'm not sure why this guy wants to come with me, Gaston. I don't get the impression he did it though, because if he did, why would he follow me? Why would he stick around for so long? Usually the reaction would be more like, uh, okay, really sad this guy died, but it's about time I should be on my way now, goodbye. But he's not acting like that at all. Hmm. He tried to crawl away, though he was heavily wounded. Something horrifying must have been after him. Are you not afraid? Wait, so did the guy come out from inside, or was he trying to scale from the side and fell down? Because the second one is what I was thinking initially, but there is already blood there. Deserted estate? Damn it. Good gods! Oh, no. What the hell's this? Setting for a banquet? It seems so. What's your suspicion? Did none survive? Gods! Oh no. Servant. Stabbed to death. Over a dozen blows with a sharp object. Some post-mortem. I cannot believe this is the work of a man. It was a monster, to be sure. I'm just looking at you right now. You're not carrying a knife on you, right? I'm just very confused why you're following me. Silver tableware. Elven engravings. Noble Houses of Toussaint. Volume LVII. LVII? What number is that? 57. Sangreal. Alternatively, Sangreal. Literally, royal blood. The legendary line which some trace back to the first lords of the lands, now lying in Toussaint in northwestern Harkland. Hackland. The first mention of Wilhelm the Bold, this line's founder, comes from elven manuscripts found during reconstruction of the Beauclair Palace in 1095. Since the source, like all things elven, is unreliable and should not be taken into consideration by historians, the existence of House Sangreal must be considered a mere fable. Salvarus, or Salvarez, the eye, of the Regulus Platinum Crest. This line takes its name from Salvar the Lame who was made a count in the year 1189 by Duchess Caro Berta for his service to the Ducal Throne. The De Salvaris line's crest depicts a Regulus Platinum, one of the so-called Silver Basilisks whose existence is highly suspect, its classification as a species considered erroneous by most zoologists. Torricella of the Two Towers Crest, an ancient line whose founders most likely first settled the lands of present-day Tucson around the year 984. They waged fierce war against the elves until the 6th decade of the 11th century, when all of what is now Tucson fell under human control. I wonder how old Tucson is as a... Um, region. Torso punctured with great force. Blow pierced hardened steel. Man on the high road. Breastplate was identical. 
guards of this estate. Throats massacred, one mighty blow. Shield along sides old and dented, swords ceremonial, and Shea handiwork clearly. Sword is ceremonial. Ceremonial bowls for little sacrifices? Of what? Please do not say humans. So this guy's not a real fighter then, right? If he was using a ceremonial sword. Ceremonial bowls for little sacrifices? Of what? Please do not say humans. Hmm. Burn marks. Something catch fire? Explode? Strong stench. Multiple wounds on the body. All puncture wounds, but hard to tell what caused them. Victim's human, but the attire's elven. Are you certain? How did he come by it? We've so few non-humans in Tucson. I haven't seen a single elf here. We've seen some Dwarven bankers, but that's it. Oh my god. Fled, then dropped to the ground to douse the flames. Didn't manage. Burnt smells growing fainter. Might have been another luckier soul managed to flee. Doublet scorched. Wriggled out of it, tossed it, then ran on. Something is alive. Perhaps there's no one inside after- I know you're in there. Breathing's loud and clear. Open up. We mean you no harm. Doesn't sound human. Theory the remain there? With the heavy breathing didn't sound like a human. Listen, I'm a witcher. I'm here to help you. But if that's gonna happen, you gotta answer some questions first. Who are you exactly? D Durant Fosher Plamonton de Safaran, Lord of these lands, and Chairman of the Society of Friends of the History of Tucson. We meet here annually to mark the anniversary of the Elfin Homage, but something like this, why it's a first. Is there any possibility that this guy's a Doppler? Which is a little bit suspicious right now. You mentioned them. Who do you mean? Those... I, I don't know what they were. Spirits? It all occurred of a sudden. We were staging a scene. The, the, the death of being homage. There was a flash of light that blinded me completely. I heard cries. Though saw nothing. It then felt my own robes were in flames. I broke and ran, threw off my doublet, leapt in here and it shut and locked the door behind me. They pounded on the door. I, I, I thought they would get through. I, I thought I was done for, but, but in the end, it, uh, it grew calm. Hmm. So while reenacting a scene from the past, somehow, unintentionally, you summoned a specter, a Korgorath, or a tube, maybe. What the hell are those? What now? Best thing? You gotta do it again, of course. Are you mad? Would you have this thing kill us? No, don't want it to kill anyone. Precisely why I gotta do my job, summon it again, whatever it is, and tend to it once and for all. Durand, think I can reenact the pledge? The giving of homage, alone? It was a great, momentous event. The surrender of Tucson's last elf and king. You will need at least three individuals. Wonderful. <laughs> I guess I was being a little bit too suspicious. This guy seems normal enough. Mm, where am I gonna find someone else? You know what I'm gonna ask for. Need your help. But I'll understand if you turn me down. No objections? Good. Let's get to work. Start by clearing the corpses. Got some time. Won't start the reenactment before nightfall. Things of this sort are a lot more likely to work after dusk. One last thing, though. My pay. Don't work for free, you know. Understood. 
Just keep the danger at bay, and I shall be generous. Through and through. I will stand, or rather, sit in for King Ludovic upon the Elfin Throne, while you, Witcher, will play the Enche ruler. We must don the costumes. All must be just right. The Vethef, the Elven King, hosted Ludovic in his own palace upon his own throne amidst the blinding glow of a plethora of torches. Light all the lamps. Oh. Do I need that? I guess so. Hey, I'm okay with me getting paid and all, but I feel like Gaston should get paid too. He's risking his own life for this. Interrupt. Sorry. Elven bread. Oh, that must be for the reenactment, but I'm just kind of taking things out of order. Ugh. Divethaf laid at Lutovic's feet a loaf of binnen and elfin bread, thus granting humans rule over seat yielding lands. Uh. Bread? Then Divetha filled the ornate ceremonial bowls with elven wine. Gwinoet, the sweetest blood of the land that had been torn from him. At long last, the elfin king grasped his sword and shield, thus symbolically passing command of his armies to humans. If I'm holding the elven sword and shield, how am I gonna fight the thing? And where is it? Okay. Oh, it's here. The Elfin King, erect in his pride, drew his blade and dropped to his knees, thus acknowledging his final defeat. Lutovic then spake. I accept your allegiance and shall return in one year's time to. Oh my god. Whoa! Whoa! Look! Look! The statues! Impossible! God's mother! Uh. Whoa! Oh my god, they are killing me right off the bat. Is this sword usable at all, or should I be using my own sword here? Holy God! Whoa! I don't even have time to get Quen up, my goodness. Tawny Owl and probably White Rafford's decoction, really. These guys seem to hit really dang hard. Oh, Dragon's Dream might be good here. People seem to be using fire a lot. But first of all, can I switch back to my normal sword? Oh my God. Oh! Not too late to surrender. This is not good enough. Oh! Stop! Did you notice I used all my white rappers decoction already? My God! Those the mages are killing me. Oh! Oh my God! Why are these guys so hard? Okay, we need a new plan here. First of all, my sword. And... We will Quen. Tawny Owl. Swallow Potion. What about using Northern Wind? If I can freeze people, that might be a better bet here. Yes. Oh god, I probably should have gotten the mages first. Here we go. Go away! Thank you! No, oh, she's not frozen. 
She's teleporting and stuff too, my god. Was that all the mages? Okay, I think we actually stand a fighting chance this time. Do the mages go through Quen or something? Cause they seem to be... They were double teaming me quite a bit. Don't die now. Yeah! My first explosion! Remember the rune word upgrade? Oh. Oh my god. The sculptures. They came alive. By what witchcraft? Dunno. Specialize in killing monsters. Reviving them? Not so much. I... I may know what happened. The statues, you see, once stood in the palace of one Defethov. I acquired them a month past because uh, perhaps I should start at the beginning. This Defethov was to pay tribute to humans, producing statues of this sort each year. Yet he did so but once, for he perished in the massacre of non-humans at the foot of Mount Gorgon in the year 782. It's fortunate he did too, as Tefethev had planned Lutefek's downfall, for he sculpted not statues, but columns that masqueraded as such, columns activated with words said in homage, columns that would have turned the king and his bodyguards into so much colorful confetti. Typical treachery embodied elves. Pshh. You're no better. Elves were just defending their territory. You humans took it, but you still weren't sated. Had to cut the elves down every last one. You? What does that mean? You're a man as we are. Yeah, in a way. Just a shame to have to admit it sometimes. Your words? They're wrong, Witcher. But I'll not let you leave empty-handed. Take this, your reward. Farewell. Well, I appreciate that. Polite disagreement. So nobody activated those golems all this time? Except for earlier in the day, but then after it was done and said, after they killed everybody, they went back to becoming golems again? <laughs> Yeesh. The Civil War in Tucson. The year 781 marked the final end of the elven rule in Tucson, the closing of an era that had lasted over one and a half thousand years. The elves abandoned their ivory cities and left for the mountains, taking with them all that they could and destroying everything else. Whatever they could not take and did not manage to demolish or burn, they cursed. The last elven sovereign, the Vethov, hundreds of years old, yet as fair as a youth, was defeated. Weeping over the slain army of his forever young brothers and sisters, he agreed to pay homage to Ludovic, the first human king of Tucson, who, though young, was as shrunken and ugly as the night after Salvin. Putting on no end of airs and graces, Ludovic boasted, Look, the proud elf shall bow down before me and kiss my royal feet with humility. To degrade the Vethev even further, Ludovic decided the homage should take place in the elf king's barely abandoned palace, the throne on which Ludovic now boldly lounged bore still smoldering marks from the fire set by the elves, who had sought to burn the whole palace down as they left. So the proud elven king bowed down before the human king and offered him a sacrifice of bread and wine, as well as his sword and shield. Spewing out merciless mockery all the while, Ludovic received this homage, then immediately ordered his guards drag the Vethev beyond the palace gates and throw him down the stairs as if he were a beggar. Witnesses claim the proud elf remained calm throughout the whole event, but when left alone, the Vethiv wiped the blood off his face and vowed cruel revenge on the king. Revenge that would come from stone as cold as the king's heart. Yet these ominous words bore no fruit, for in the year 782, before the homage was renewed, the Vethiv drew his last breath alongside his remaining soldiers when the Toussaint-Trois decided to celebrate the anniversary of the surrender of the elven sovereign with a pogrom of non-humans on the slopes of Mount Gorgon. Few survived. Ah, um, we could have read this before we did the quest, couldn't we? 
And that's why there's not many elves here, because why would any elf, why would any self-respecting elf want to be here? Doesn't matter how prosperous this place is, it's not a good place for their ancestors. Now we never went into this house. Oh, because we can't go in. I guess Gaston was really just some random guy who wanted to look at what was going on in here. That's it. Oh, well, that guy's still here. You would do best to leave. Resume your path, master. Okay. Well, thank you for having me here for the short little while. And now it's super dark at night. Wow, we got a bit sidetracked, huh? Because we were really gonna go find the white, which we're a little bit off path of now. Is Gaston still here? His horses are. Here our paths diverge. Yup. Farewell. I got a horse of my own too. Move it. Let's go, Roach. Carlberta Woods. Place that nobody really should be going to by themselves. But yet that's exactly what we're doing. A guarded treasure. Let's take the cap potion. I can't see. What are you? Foglets! My favorite! There's actually so many here this time, too. Dang. Hey, World put in some work, huh? Wait, the foggy areas are really hard to see because of the... the whiteness. Oh, little rabbits, you're all safe now. It's creepy. There's wolves howling in the distance. Gauntlets. Hunk of nickel. But the main treasure is... That one. Smiggle Circus's notes. Spoon made of pure gold. Oh, that's right! Didn't they say something about spoons at the White's Lair? I've lost him, my dearest! Someone has stolen him, my darling, my treasure, my spoon! That creature from the Caraberta Woods must have been it. All the help says the town's abuzz with talk about missing spoons, for much time now indeed. Since this creature has stolen cutlery from all Beauclair, and has not yet been caught by our valiant guard, it means it must be clever, tricky even. And anyone clever can be swayed by arguments, especially financial ones. So I asked my jeweler, Mathenberg, to make me a spoon out of pure gold, which I shall take to the Caraberta Woods to find that monster and propose a trade. A spoon of gold for my most precious spoon. Oh. There's actually no quest here. It was just a spoon thing. Okay. What was that about a spoon with a white? Um... Hmm, they don't mention it here. Okay. Did we ever get an entry for a spotted white? No, that's for the other thing. White would be... A, I thought it would be a relic, but it's not. Spectre? Well, I'm sure we'll figure it out once we get there. Hmm. Okay. Let's keep going then. Oh my god! What are you doing here? Did you kill the rabbits? Oh, these are just regular foglets. They're not even related to the um, guarded treasure here. Okay, fine, whatever then. <laughs> I'm out of here. Take it easy. We kind of have to ride through the woods though, so. Oh. Whoa. Tres Tamara Hunting Cottage. Bar guests, never a good omen. 
Argus? Isn't that something that we saw in Witcher 1? Oh my god, that was so long ago. It's like some kind of demonic dog. Uh huh. Bargists. Are specters. Yeah, demonic ghost dog thing. Shun Sin, renounce foul deeds, and if evil threatens to overwhelm your will, ponder the fate of the outskirts of Vizima. Remember the hideous Bargists, which scourge them and repent. Folk of simple or superstitious minds claim committing particularly rotten acts will bring down the wrath of the gods in the form of Bargists, phantom dogs which stalk the roads at night. Even if this were their origin, Bargists, saints and sinners alike would need to fear Bargists. What? Even if this were their origin, saints and sinners alike would need to fear Bargists, for they attack both with equal ferocity. Witchers rarely believe in the gods, but they do accept that Bargists exist and are always connected with some sequence of tragic events that happened in the past. Their explanation, however, holds that Bargists result from a curse or a concentration of ill will. Yeah, in the, in the Witcher 1, at nighttime, in the outskirts of Izima, we would run into these dogs all the time, right? Oh my gosh, that was really so long ago. I think we had to collect their teeth or something? I don't think this is where we were looking to be, though. Not exactly. Trastamara Hunting Cottage. Amidas de Trastamara obtained this property from Duchess Caroberta in recognition for his service to Tucson. The ruler's gift came with an unexpected barb, however, for the house turned out to be haunted, and even worse, deep in tax arrears. Oh no. <laughs> Trastamara consulted the druids of Ked Merkvid about his case, and was given the following advice. If you cannot reach a deal with a specter, let it be and call it a day. Hmm, I'm guessing that means nobody lives here then. Oh, these are spoons. What? They've been collecting spoons here? It can't be the dogs that have been collecting spoons here, right? Oh god, I can't see! I don't even know what color these dogs are originally. I kind of want to see, but... That would require me taking off the... Cat potion. Yeesh. Okay. You know, I have all these attributes on me right now because we rested at Corvo Bianco and all that. But earlier, I still had so much trouble with the living statues. My goodness. Regis' raven wasn't lying. Spoons all over the place. I have a few spoons. Would you like to trade the golden spoon for whatever precious spoon you have of that merchant? sense that the spoons are beating out some kind of rhythm, a message, trying to tell me something. Mm. Can we take away the cat? Because I'd rather use the torch here. Am I not wearing gauntlets? No, I am. The torch? Here we go, this looks much better. There's like ladles and stuff too. All kinds of different spoons. Openable? Nope. What's the message you're trying to tell me? Turn back. Don't come here. Who is giving me the message though, more importantly? The white or somebody else? Are whites intelligent? 
I didn't think so, judging by the one that we saw last time. None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. Sounds like a curse, all right. Supposedly extinct, but there's one spotted white here. Of all places. Somebody's clearly obsessed. Regis mentioned the place might be cursed. Can't be a coincidence. Need to look around. There is a fire inside. What a pigsty. Need to search it thoroughly. Find a way to collect some white saliva. Feel like all the spoons are moving in tune with each other. Mr. White? White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. I have a lot of spoons. Spoons incredible. The craftsmanship. Must have graced a rich man's table. I have a golden spoon. Wow. Stained diary. For a few days now, I've been having dizzy spells. I've never experienced anything like this before. If it carries on, although I can't stand witchcraft and sorcery, I'll have to visit an herbalist. The dizziness has not gone away. Worst of all, it's been joined by pain, so strong that at times I cannot see. I've been to the herbalist. A repulsive old crone looked at me like she had seen a monster. She gave me some cursed mixture that I have to drink twice a day. It's not helping at all. Today, like every day, I looked in the mirror and I was lost for words. I usually check that I don't have any wrinkles or bags under my eyes, but today, there are no wrinkles, but I'd rather that there were. I have hair growing on my breasts. It's horrible. It's got to be because of those damned herbs. I went to the herbalist to smash her face in, but her chambers were empty. She must have known what would happen to me and legged it. My family is starting to suspect something, although I'm cutting the hair back, which is growing back faster and faster. I've tried putting the idea out of my head, but I can't hold it back any longer. Maybe it wasn't the herbs that have led to this, but a curse placed upon me by an old beggar whom I had to chase off one time. I have to find out. I want to hire someone who can find the herbalist. I cannot think, and it is getting hard to write. Loneliness. No family. Eat. I want to eat. Not a good spoon. Empty spoons. Nothing. Eat. It hurts. Mirrors. Lies. No. Ah. Poor girl. Realized she was changing into a monster. Recorded it in her diary. Poignant. Is it possible for us to reverse this? It kind of freaks me out that she mentions mirrors and spoons in the same diary, cause... Whoa. Who do we know who's obsessed with spoons and mirrors? Smashed mirror. As if someone couldn't stand to look at themselves. The monster. Journal's author, maybe? Very likely. So not originally a white. But I don't really even know how whites come into being originally. We probably have to read a bestiary entry later on. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. Blood on the walls. No spoon you have shall say to you. Whatever lives here treated that literally. Still searching for the right spoon. I feel like when we touch the spoons, she knows where I am. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. As if it's echolocation or something. Are those all spoons? If you look on the mini-map? My god. Okay, those are not all spoons. White's obsessed. A real collector. Thoroughbred. The family. Skeletons. Doubt they came here willingly. This have anything to do with the curse? None shall sit and dine with you at your table. It'd make sense. 
right arm bit right off. Teeth all knocked out. Somebody tried to force feed him. Broken neck, indentation in the skull's lateral surface. Smacked in the head with something heavy. For the girl's sake, I really hope this isn't her family. No claw or fang marks. Probably choked to death. Ooh. Decaying letter. Dear Master Leva Levasseur, I know you track out laws for pay. I have an unusual assignment for you. No doubt you wonder why I have drawn you out here, and why we cannot meet in person. You see, in my present situation, any kind of meeting is very risky. Not so much for me, as for the person with whom I meet, for I am afflicted by a curse, or, as I hope, and why I have turned to you, the side effects of medicine given to me some time ago by an herbalist. Soon after I visited this herbalist, she disappeared without trace. I desperately wish to understand my illness, so I wish to hire you to find her. When you do, learn as much from her as you can about the medicine she gave me. If my suffering is a result of her wickedness, then make her provide an antidote. I assure you I have ample wealth and will reward you with no small part of it for your services. If it turns out my suffering is not the fault of the herbalist, please let her go. I will then have a different task for you, because this shall mean I am afflicted by a terrible curse which only the gods can cure. I believe it was cast upon me by a certain beggar who came by the manor while I was hosting a soiree for a few friends. If you can find that vagrant, I will pay you double. Sadly, all I remember of him is that he sold mirrors. Ooh. I am aware that this is not much aid for your hunt, yet I trust in your considerable talents and wish you the best of luck. Marlene the Trust Tamara. That must be her then. An old beggar who sells mirrors. Woman's name scratched into this wooden spoon. Romantic. Well, it's either the herbalist or the old beggar, who sounds a lot like it could be Gondor Odim or something. We don't know which one it is, but I'm thinking it's the herbalist because... Well, why did she run away if it wasn't her? Coincidence? But then at the same time, if the mirror guy is actually Gondor Odim... Hmm. Actually does seem like a white slayer. Bit atypical, but still. Cauldron should be somewhere around here. Then it could be him too. But I didn't get the feeling that we would be seeing him again. Cauldron I was looking for. Why it's not particularly tidy. Table set. White who lives here is getting ready for some sort of feast. White that lives here. Definitely afflicted by a curse, and it's been trying desperately to lift it. Cauldron's empty, unfortunately. We just need some brew. Afraid he won't get that. No choice but to hide and wait for the saliva glands and their bearer. Need a spot that'll let me observe the cauldron. Spoon. Pretty ordinary. Maybe a little old. If we can talk to the white and lift the curse for her, I feel like that definitely beats killing the white and trying to get its saliva. Oh. Oh, right here. But is there more to look at here? Hold on. Another spoon. Another spoon. Yep, just as normal as the last one. Can she still talk? Oh, we can probably get some saliva from the cauldron there. But it would be nice if we could help her out too.
We can do this with no preparation? Oh, the crown is spoons. I'm not gonna hurt you. Wanna help? I've seen the words of the curse on the walls. Think I know how to lift it. She's scared. So she might understand what we're saying here, but she can't... She can't make the sounds of human speech. You tried to bring folk here, convince them to sit at the table with you, right? Well, I'm gonna be your guest now. Your willing guest. Ah! Break the words. Why, well, thank you for passing me over a chair. <laughs> Just need a bit for Regis. And now we'll tend to you. Need to get this right. Words of the curse were None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No spoon you have shall say to you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. You gotta give her the right spoon. Aww. Uh... No spoon, you... What was it again? Need to get this right. Words of the curse were... None shall sit and dine with you at your table. No, no spoon, spoon you have shall, shall sate you. you. Never again shall you wish to spy your reflection in the mirror. If we swap the spoons, the curse will still be in effect, right? Because there is a spoon involved. Why don't we just go without it? We can't use spoons. No, that won't work. You've been looking for a spoon that would feed you, but there's no such spoon. We need to eat without spoons. Hard home. Ugh. <laughs> What is it? Open your eyes. You need to see your likeness. Did it work? Whoa, I'm completely toxic up. For some reason. Think it worked. Just not quite like I expected. Need to see what happened to the white. Won't be hard to find given its stench. Where are you, buddy? Um, I didn't go check here first, so is it okay if I look here? It seemed like something happened. The very minimum. Holy god! You're joking me! All spoons? Oh, wow. Wow. This truly is a curse. If it was any normal person, you might be like, wow, this is a really impressive collection, but this is... this is just sad. Have I freed you from it yet? We're all the way back in the beginning. Where are you, buddy? Oh, not you. Oh, that's right. That's how you guys look like. All glowy and stuff at night. And apparently you even breathe fire, my gosh. Or, maybe that's not fire. 
just demonic spewings in general. Where have you gone, buddy? Don't make me walk too far. There's a lot of scary bar guests here. Would be really great if you could <laughs> cut me some slack. Guess we gotta deal with this first. Thank you. Oops. Now back to the stench here. I thought we were following it right, but uh... Did you just go down here or... No, you're wrapped around. Marlene! Shh, easy. Not gonna hurt you. Eat. I, I must eat. Take you someplace safe. My home. Oh, that's wonderful. So I took her by the hand and led her here. Seemed the only sensible place for her. You did the right thing, sir. She should recover quickly here. Don't worry, sir. I shall see to everything. She is safe here and in good hands. She'll soon be back on her feet. Might actually take a while. She hadn't eaten anything in over a hundred years when I found her. Horrid. Whatever brought this about? Told me her story on the way here. Her name's Marlena. She was once Marlena. the very beautiful and proud heiress to the Trastamara estate. One evening, when she was holding a banquet for friends, a beggar came to her gate seeking alms. He had a bowl and a spoon with him. He sat outside her fence and waited. I've heard of the custom. An ancient rite of hospitality that obliges one to give food and drink to such a guest lest he depart hungry. To neglect the custom is to bring great misfortune down upon oneself. Marlena didn't care a whit for the old customs. She drove the man off, saying she'd rather feed the leftovers from her feast to her dogs than to give the beggar anything. The beggar then broke his spoon, cast a curse. She was beautiful, so he said she'd never wish to look at herself in the mirror again. Since she adored feasts, he swore no one would ever wish to sit and dine with her. And as she even refused him the crumbs from her table, he swore she'd never find a spoon in the world that would sate her hunger. A harsh punishment. I imagine lifting the curse was hardly simple. You hear the music? It's the Gondor Dim music. So I guess we get a confirmation here. How do they rule out the herbalist though? Because she seemed kind of dodgy too. Curses are tricky. They play on irony. Always gotta figure out what the catch is. Marlena had spent decades looking for a way to lift it. Transformed into a white, she stole spoons and lured folk into her home, trying each time to get them to dine with her. Didn't work. So what did? Someone had to sit down and share a meal with her of their own free will. They had to eat without using spoons and make her look at her reflection. That's it? That was all it required? Simplest solutions are sometimes the last that come to mind. Besides, when you're a white, it's pretty damn hard to find willing human company for a feast. I imagine so. But, most importantly, it is now over. Please, don't worry. She will be in good hands here. Poor Marlena, oh my goodness. Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. This kind of curse involving wordplay. Just the kind of thing that Gondro Dim would do, huh? And he probably did that just because it's funny or amusing. Oh, she must be too busy trying to fill her stomach to talk. Mm. Mm. Tasty. Mm. So... 
Wonderful. Thank you. I'll stay for as long as you like. I don't come back that often. Oh, while we're here, maybe we should fill out this properly too. We have two more weapon racks. I'm really glad we have a home where we can invite people in and just be like, Hey, you can stay here and rest up. Because if this happened beforehand, then we wouldn't be able to do that, right? The best we would be able to do is take her back to the nearest village and call it a day. Okay, we gotta put down some swords. How about the wooden sword? This one should be okay, right? Oh, my level 1 Witcher Steel Sword. Frickin' take that out. And then... Do I have room for two more? The horizontal weapon rack can hold two. An axe? Would an axe work? Wild Hunt Warrior Axe. Didn't take out the right one, but... I don't even know what that is. Well, we'll see. If not, maybe this one? It looks kind of unique. It's got some cool handles going on there. Why do I keep taking the wrong one out? The same wrong one too! Why is everything glowing like this? I'm not using Witcher senses. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay, put down the... Yeah, the axe doesn't work here. Hmm. Witcher steel sword? Oh! The elven shield. We can put it here. Put the blunt sword here. And then one more. Yeah, that has an elven name. Right under the elven shield. Cool. Okay, well, lady, keep resting up here, alright? Stay for as long as you like, really. Very unfortunate, the axe didn't work. I guess we can rest here again, since we're back at home anyway. Although the special effects haven't even worn off yet. Nine a.m. Eight a.m. I got a royal bed. One thousand points vitality increase. Very good. Very good. It's a tad brighter here. Is Marlena still here? Yes, she is. Okay. Let's set out then. <laughs> 